It's my pleasure to invite you, uh, to welcome you back to this part of the proceedings. The service was lovely, wasn't it? Yes, yes, yes. A real blessed time. Thank you, Andrea, and everyone else concerned. I am Frank Davis, and I have been ably <laughs> helped by my wife <laughs> for 57 years. Oh. Oh. And we as a family are very happy together um, with, Car with each other, with Carolyn, with Graham, her brother, and lovely wife Sarah and these two young ladies. <laughs> and uh, we are blessed. And we're blessed to know you, David, mm -hmm. recently, and um, to have got to know you, and then on a country walk for you to sidle up to me. <laughs> and and I do thank you for respecting the fact that I am Caroline's father and that you asked if you may ma ask her to marry you. I was delighted to say yes and today to see you made one in Christ Jesus. It's lovely. Uh, a real joy, to, real joy to us. We've waited a while. <laughs> But sometimes you have to wait for good things. Um, now, I respectfully ask you, Carolyn's husband, may I speak about your wife? Go on then. Carolyn, you uh, joined our family on the 20. 5th of September, 1964. It was 62 this morning, but I checked up. <laughs> <laughs> Mum and I have been privileged to watch you grow and to enjoy your sweet personality. Right from the beginning, you were this lovely little child like a doll to us. Uh, and I recall us watching you doing all the little things you used to do. And then one day I noticed something, and it was that in your high chair, you adopted a pose that every time a spoon was off to your mouth, your arms. <laughs> 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 Don't <any more. laughs> And uh, that was all right until your dish was empty and we started eating from our plates. And your arms, <laughs> every spoonful we took, your arms went wilder <laughs> and your eyes glared. <laughs> and it was quite menacing <laughs> <laughs> until we took you out of the high chair and put you down and uh, you became your lovely self again. <laughs> As you got a little bit older and you, you, you were crawling, you wanted to escape. <laughs> I don't know why, but <laughs> if the door was open, you'd be outside and we followed you one day and you crawled down the drive, across the lawn, and there was a lady you used to like next door. And we watched you, listen to this David, <laughs> we watched you go through some rose bushes, grimacing <laughs> as you went through the thorns, but determinedly you went through them, and then we grabbed you back, but quiet persistence. I've noticed. <laughs> <laughs> At 18 months, 
you'd learned some nursery rhymes. And one day, I had you sitting on my knee, and I started a nursery rhyme, and you sang the nursery rhyme. And I said, again, and you <coughs> sang the nursery rhyme, and I harmonized with you. And you stayed singing, and I harmonized with you. And then I taught you the harmony, and I sang the nursery rhyme, and to my amazement, <coughs> at 18 months, you harmonized with me, and you never stopped saying something. That was really lovely. I hope you're finding this in. <laughs> <laughs> we are, not sure what's coming. <laughs> Old, you love to dress up and play with a big cardboard box. That cardboard box was more than any toys we could have bought when we knew it became a house, it became a car, it became everything. And you had some clothes that you used to dress up in. But what you used to love to do was one day I got a bowl of water and I took it by the garage, which was clad in white asbestos sheeting. <coughs> if you got something wet and wet the white, it went to a very satisfying dark grey immediately. So I gave Carmen this three inch brush and a bowl of water and this little three year old started painting the <laughs> And she would dab the brush in and she went right along the length of this garage me moving the ball from time to time. And when she got to that end, with quiet persistence, <laughs> she asked to go back to that end and start again. <laughs> Carolyn is a very pleasant, loving, quietly persistent <laughs> person. Yeah. Yeah, are you still there? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when you were 10, <laughs> in, in 1972, and divorced, we moved to Shrewsbury, and as we were moving into our new home, you requested a four-poster bed. <laughs> <laughs> And the Heath Robinson model that ensued seemed to suffice with all your dolls and the family. It was at that time I uh, remember carrying a huge cello to music practices and being called upon to ride out into the countryside and mend your puncture <laughs> on your bike with all your friends. And at Christmas and birthdays, I recall you and Graham were always such fun. Yeah. Amazing fun. In the games, you would dress up, you would dance and sing Catalan. When she was younger, we'd put some music on, and we would be doing something, and she would start dancing. <laughs> with oh, 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 yeah, that's what I'm worried about. <laughs> <laughs> Have you got the music with you? It's funny you should say that, yeah. <laughs> but we used to have such wonderful times. Uh, with, with you at this Christmas party, singing, singing. Catelyn has a wonderful pseudo operatic voice. Oh, yeah. oh, 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 Thank you. You were great. Oh. But I wasn't. Oh. Um, Catelyn came home one day with a dress. I 
could not imagine seeing her in this dress. <laughs> I said, Carolyn, I'm sorry. I can't cope with that. No, I won't buy that for you. It was years later that I realized that she had the dress. <laughs> and over a period of time, she paid her best friend the money back. <laughs> <laughs> Quiet. Yes, I've got the message. <laughs> 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 Then, I remind myself with these notes, I want to go to France as an au pair. Sixteen. Eighteen. Eighteen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well that makes me feel better. <laughs> I knew I dare not say no. She would find a friend. <laughs> <laughs> so we found a friend who knew a friend who'd got a friend, and Carolyn had a lovely time there in France, didn't she? What's France? Got that one. Okay. Um, unwittingly, we parents. Through the years of our child's development, growth and development, are providing for them two vital assets. The first being roots, a foundation of love, example and support, which provides you with the confidence for the next asset that we provide, and that is wings. So that you can flee the nest when you're old enough, and then build your own career, relationships, home, and family. I have never known anybody take so long <laughs> to grow the wing. <laughs> Quite persistence. <laughs> oh, thank, thank you, my assistant. <laughs> In your 20s and onwards, you went for nursing training in London. You worked at Shrewsbury Council, Shropshire. Where's Mary? Are you there? Training. Shropshire yeah. training. And a number of other jobs now through the years. You studied for your master's degree, bought your own home, ran your personal life so well. To mum and me, Carolyn, you're a hero. Yes, yes. you are. And, uh, you we love you so we much. Love you. And I hope David, David realizes the wonderful gift I've given him today. <laughs> <laughs> I've so enjoyed the years you spent with us talking, walking, holidaying together, singing to the Jigsaws, helping you in your home and garden. And I just want to say, I've mentioned family, Graham, your brother, his lovely wife and the girls. <coughs> um, it would be totally wrong of me to not mention another important family, a, a person in our family. We believe in Jesus. Yes. We believe he's the Son of God. We believe he died and rose again. And we believe he came for us all. And we believe he's here yes. now. Yes. 
expanding in our midst. Mm -hmm. Here with the power to heal us and the grace to forgive. And now, Carolyn, we release you to your new life with dear David. And as you face the future together, you will find that in relationships like the weather, the sunniest of summers can throw up the old dawn. But Jesus still says, with great effect, peace. Be still. I propose a toast to you. Mm -hmm. yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, please raise your glasses. Would you please stand and drink to Cameron and David's future health? <coughs> to the bride.